Hey, how's it going everyone? Today I'm going to be working on this Game Gear. Now this one, I did test it out and it did show that it was having uh, no display. So we can go ahead and test that out real quick. So I don't want to be putting the six batteries in, so I will be using the AC adapter and then just simply putting in Sonic and testing that out. So let's turn this on and let me show you all. So here I'm just going to move the contrast wheel. So you can hear that it's working, but you actually don't see anything on the display. You can actually hear the game starting up. And you can even see it very faintly in there. Now, as you all know, Game Gears are pretty notorious for having bad capacitors. And in this case, I'm going to be replacing it with this cap kit. I think I got this from Handheld Legend, but there's a lot of vendors. I mean, obviously, I didn't want to ship from the UK, but um, I know Retro 6 has those modernized capacitors. And it tends to fix a lot of these problems, but... Uh, one other thing that I do want to note is that uh, when replacing these capacitors, there's a distinct smell. Uh, it's It smells pretty gross when you're replacing them if you're using a hot air station. Now, you could use a soldering iron, but it takes a lot longer, and I prefer to use a hot air station. Um, it's been a while, but I'm going to go ahead and speed through a lot of this just to kind of make it go faster. But I did want to just go ahead and, and uh, show you that process. So let's go ahead and open this up and get started. All right, so there was one thing that I noticed. Normally you would remove this screw here. And I noticed that as soon as I removed these screws that it loosened up and it looks like someone already tried to fix this in the past. And um, yeah, I don't know what happened here, but it looks like they tried to force it open and I guess they got to it. So it is broken there. Now it looks like they didn't work on any other pieces as far as I can tell, or maybe they did. I'm, I'm not too sure, but we'll have to kind of look through that, but I can, see that the capacitors are still left alone and a lot of them don't really have a lot of them leaking here so that is a good sign but um, even though they're not leaking these tend to go bad really quick anyway so I'm gonna replace them nonetheless we're gonna start working on this I'm gonna start by removing these cables here um, I'm gonna leave the blue sides attached so these are blue and these are the white ones and you can simply just pull on them just be careful not to pull too much on the wire just kind of move it around and here you can see that we loosened it up there is one more cable that's located right here. And this one, just be very careful. And right here, I'm just kind of wedging it out. And let's just be a little bit more careful with it. There we go. Once everything is removed, we can simply remove the shielding, just lift it off. Now this is being held down by two screws that are located right here and right here. Just simply remove those as well. So based on the installation instructions for the cap kit, they do mention to put the five 100 microfarad uh, caps to replace these five old existing caps from the audio board. So these are the five that I just pointed out. So I'm gonna get my hot air station and the two of the capacitors that you really have to be careful are on these two in particular. Uh, the main reason obviously is because there's plastic located right here. So we'll try to be careful with that as we remove these and we should be okay. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll replace all these.
go ahead and put it back now that it's finished. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put the shielding back on. And look, you can see that there's some old fingerprints. Doesn't look like my gloves could have caused that. I mean, maybe it was sweat, I don't know, but it looks like someone's worked on it. And we're gonna put back the four screws that belong to the shielding. Now we move over to the power side and this has two screws that we're gonna remove similar to the other side with the sound. So let's remove that real quick. And then we'll replace those three capacitors and I'll show you which ones right now. So before removing it, we do have to remove this uh, black piece of plastic here. So I'm gonna just peel this out and just be careful. Mine's really stuck on there. I don't want to bend it too much. Let me kind of get under here. We should be able to remove the power here. Let me lift that out. There we go. So now once you have the power board out, we are planning to replace these three capacitors. Now I'm going to use my desoldering gun to simply uh, just remove the joints here from the bottom and then replace it with the ones that they provided in the kit. So these belong to the power board and we'll simply just replace that and then cut the excess amount and i'll go ahead and show you how to do that um so let me go ahead and get my desoldering gun and let's get started on this piece All right, so let's put this back. There we go. And make sure to put back the protective cover on here. So this just is gonna go back on. Should still have some adhesive left, so there you go. And then we simply put back the two screws and then we're gonna start get started on the main board. All right, so the next thing we're gonna have to do is remove the six screws. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then these two screws and this should be able to lift the board off so i'm going to go ahead and do that um i'm just going to go ahead and just fast forward through this since the video is running kind of long so i'm probably going to start on the right side so here there are three capacitors it's going to be one two and three i'm going to get my hot air gun and i'm going to work my way over here to the left side now all of these are pretty easy the thing that you have to be careful with is um, there's obviously this piece of plastic right here. So you have to be careful on how you uh, add the heat gun or you can use the soldering iron. It's really up to you. And then of course this piece right here, this one's pretty tough because it's literally like right next to it. So you have to be very careful on how you uh, remove that. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all these. So I do have a reference that I got from Retro6 on the installation guide. So it's really just this piece right here. 
and this is telling me exactly where all the uh, capacitors will go on the board so this makes it a lot easier for me that way I'm not keeping track and that way I can go ahead and remove all the capacitors so I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward I'm gonna remove all the capacitors and then we'll go ahead and replace it All right, now that everything's completed, let's go ahead and reassemble everything. We'll start with the front of the case. So let's get this case right here. Let's make sure everything's in place. And then simply just drop this board on there. There we go. And we'll go ahead and screw everything into position. That way we can secure it. Now that everything's in place, let's go ahead and reconnect everything. So we'll start by putting the two shells next to each other. And so here, this white cable, we can start with this one, will end up going on this side right here. Just connect that, it should hold the board up. This white one goes over here. And finally, the speaker cable, we wanna wrap that one around kind of here on the, where we secure it, and then um, put it into this one right here. Now that everything's in place, we just want to simply secure it. We'll close it. And let's go ahead and test it out and see if everything works. Let's put in a game. And turn it on. See what we get. And we get nothing. So it still plays. Let's check the brightness. Maybe it's just set. Nope, nothing. So just from testing it out, everything else seems to be working. The speaker sounds fine. The buttons are working. Um, it's able to obviously turn on, but the screen still does not appear to show anything. So we're gonna have to further troubleshoot this and see what's going on. So let's go ahead and open it up again. All right, so I've been messing around with this for a little bit and I did notice um, after testing it again, I wanted to take a further look and what I ended up doing was just connecting it to the board here. So let's go ahead and test. 
and I started probing around. And one of the things that I did notice was, let me see if I can connect it real quick. Uh, normally I wouldn't recommend anyone do this, but it's just connected just to demonstrate. So I'm gonna power it on and we get power. And I do notice, let me see if I can turn the wheel here. You can kind of see that it changes. So it's actually working and you can see the fluorescent light. Let me move that a little bit. It has very low power. You can't really tell, but it does have power. Um, and you really can notice it right here, like in the bottom. Let's take a look. Go ahead and adjust it. See, it gets brighter and dimmer. And after looking around for quite a bit, I did notice that this fuse right here was broken. So what it told me was that this fluorescent light bulb was just not working properly. And we can go ahead and demonstrate that. So there is a fuse located on the right and then one on the left. So when we probe this with con continuity, this one seems to be working. And this is just really connecting from here to here. Now the other one, check this out. You see that? How it turns on? But right here, we're not, not getting continuity. I'm not sure if the fuse is blown out, but when I test them out, just connecting them here, that one seems to be working. But when I test the one on the left, that seems to be getting some intermittent type of beeps. And you can see that the fluorescent light turns on. But nonetheless, I don't have the part to fully repair it, but hopefully, um, you know, someone out there in the comments can provide maybe some potential uh, information as to what may be causing this. I don't know if it's really the fuse and I don't want to bridge this together. I mean, I guess I could, but I don't know if I run into any other issues. So I'm just going to go ahead and play it safe and then just go get a, a brand new fuse and test that out. But if that doesn't work, maybe this would be a perfect candidate for replacing this uh, piece here and adding a mod. So I'm not terribly concerned about this board since we already recapped it. Everything seems to be working except this fluorescent light. So I'll look into some of my options on that. But on the meantime, I think I'm just going to leave this here for now until I get those additional pieces. And then we can go ahead and uh, try to repair that one more time. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this video. I don't have the additional components to get this back into working state. So we'll just end it here. But I do want to say that if you did find this interesting, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you have any comments on how to potentially fix this, um, let me know in the comments below. That way I can go ahead and try that out. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you all next time.